everyone, it's Jam from Jam Plans Things and welcome to my plan with me video for this week. So it's the final week of my galaxy theme and I'm going to be using the same tools that I've been using the past few weeks so if you want to see those in more detail I recommend you watching my, um, my monthly setup video which has a little bit more information. So I started out by using the compass and I'm just going to draw um, a slightly larger than half circle um, and the idea of that is when you see the constellation diagrams they have a lot of the hemispheres drawn out that way so I wanted to kind of just draw a makeup constellation hemisphere using the watercolor techniques that I've been using all month um, I feel like it look kind of nice um, you've also would have noticed that on the left hand side um, you can see the spread from last week and you can see a little bit of the ghosting there um, I'm actually not too concerned with ghosting on my LT. I kind of feel like it's a okay give to have if you're um, if you want like really bright colors because of the way the um, paint sits on top and I because I come from a Hobonichi, um, a Hobonichi book which is a much thinner paper than the LT I honestly didn't notice it at all until people started pointing it out to me so if you do um, if you don't mind that you might um, find the LT okay because I do like the creamy paper but if you do prefer um, no ghosting at all then the Archer and Ola is probably probably the right notebook for you so I'm just applying some mask fluid um, now because I want these items the clouds and the stars to um, to pop and the best way to do that is to have um, blank paper underneath it so that you can use lighter colors and you're not getting um, any of the darker color bleeding into it I while I'm waiting for the masking fluid to dry I'm just outlining the stars that I can at the time so it's now been I think two weeks since Hermione has arrived and they're um, they're a lot better now they're sitting next to each other they hang out while we're at work um, they're very cute they play a lot so things are improving quite a bit there was a little a few fights at the beginning but now it's just a lot more playful and they seem to be enjoying each other's company which is great I hope at one point Hermione would discover that she can sit on my journal so she can um, meet all of you guys at the moment it's just Humphrey who likes to um, be the center of attention I'm using um, as you can see here I'm using the biggest Princeton brush that I have the Princeton brushes uh, this is the glacier series and it's a synthetic brush uh, and I find it's pretty good for holding a lot of water if you want to just kind of lay down because so I like to use this when I'm doing washes um, what you can see here is you can can you kind of see how the paint is kind of sitting in the little um, rivets as the paper buckles what you need to make sure is you need to go back with maybe a dry brush or a dry brush than what I have now you can dry it off with a paper towel and just pick up the excess ink so it doesn't sit too much in there and cause those stripes to go through your painting so on my palette you can kind of see a mixture of a pale lilac, purple, a more bluish purple and a dark blue and I'm just using the base colours that I have in my um, palette and I'm mixing it with the neutral grey that I got from my Jello Mission um, to darken the colours. So I'm finding using a neutral grey works really well. I don't like to use a lot of blacks because what happens then is that it makes it very very muddy and using a neutral tint um, works a lot better if you want to um, if you want to take the same shade and make it a little bit darker. Um, if you want to mix your own type of grey, I recommend using an ultramarine um, mixed with a type of, of maybe a yellow ochre and that works very well if you don't have a neutral tint. But um, this was, um, it's been working really really well for me this month so that's like my watercolour skill that I learned. What I'm doing now is I'm using my um, size 4 Isabe um, Kalinsky brush. It comes to a better snap tip than my synthetic brushes do. So I like using this one, um, the Kalinsky versions for details. And what I'm doing is I'm using quite um, a dark colour, I'm almost dipping it directly into the pans. Um, pans of paint so that I can define the edges of the clouds a little bit better whereas I don't really care about the definition within the middle of like the nebulous cloud area I do want the front clouds to have some of that kind of fluffy definition so in order to do that I'm painting the edges with the darker color first and that works pretty well I'm now just dotting a few extra stars using the darker um, the darker purple mixed with the neutral tint um, to have um, to have those kind of contrast I feel like adding these little stars as splatters really really helps 
works in kind of grounding the overall image and just giving it that little bit of extra character. I find that if you don't really do that, uh, it can look a little bit empty. I'm also trying to just draw a few little uh, like kid stars where you do like the cross with um, you know the ones in the corners as well and just a few diamond shaped stars to kind of give it more of a twinkling look. I'm mixing it up a little bit. I'm not only using the paints, but um, when I am using the paints, I try and do a mixture of really dark stars and also those that are mixed with um, a little bit more water to give it that diluted look because not all stars are shining brightly all at the same time, if that makes sense. You kind of want a variation, so it looks like it's twinkling a bit more. And to help with that twinkle, I'm using my Peppercorn Arts um, dot card again using the lavender um, paint here just to give that extra sheen now when you're looking at it from the top it does look like normal purple paint but I do love the um, the metallic gloss that I get when I look at my notebook from the side during the week do you guys remember the metallic gel pens that you used to get when you were little I remember those but I think that if you um, didn't have access to a lot of metallic colored paints because it's a little bit harder to get your hands on a whole bunch of colors compared to say gold or silver then I think those metallic pens would work really well if you want to add a few sparkly metallic stars to your spread the kind of coloring that I did this week is a mixture of the technique that I did in week one with the um, the bubbles and the bubbles kind of um, helped me form the clouds and then what I did last week which is just lay down a lot of color really fast to kind of get that bleedy smoky look that you're kind of um, you kind of used to with watercolors. Um, as a disclaimer, I actually had a lot of trouble achieving that type of look in the Archer and Olive because the paint sunk so quickly onto the paper that I couldn't get that, um, that, that type of smoky look that you want to achieve, which is a big reason why I switched for this month and picked a theme, um, a theme like this because you kind of take advantage of it when you're in the LT and everything kind of sits on the top. So it really depends on the style that you're going for, um, when you're picking between journals. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just removing all the masking fluid that I put down before. I mean, if you have a look, you can see how um, bright the clouds still look because I didn't paint over them in comparison to um, how they look adjacent to the um, to the kind of nebula sky thing. I'm mixing a little bit of metallic pink with um, a little tiny bit of pink paint and I'm using that to create um, like a little glowy wash. Uh, and the idea being that when you look at it on the side, the clouds kind of look like a little bit silvery and sit on top of the paper uh, so I think I might have gone overboard with sparkles this month uh, well this week but I kind of do um, like doing that every now and again I'm using this deep purple um, metallic that I have called Emperor as well to kind of mix between the bright purple lavender um, metallic paints from the peppercorn set and the darker one and now I'm using the fine tech Calero set and I'm using the white platinum color and you kind of see when I'm putting the platinum on these clouds you can kind of see how there's like little bumps and that's what it looks like when the paint um, buckles the page and there's really nothing so much you can do about it when you're painting something so thin like the, um, the fine tech paints um, I find that with the gold you don't really notice the buckling as much with the clouds I think it might be because the platinum color is so bright you do get that little crinkle in it um, but I don't mind it too much I think it still makes the page look very nice so I don't regret putting the platinum on it but it's just something that you might want to think about if that kind of warpy feeling um, uh, bothers you that being said, if you're doing it in like the Archer and Olive, I don't actually think you'll have that problem at all. Uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't um, buckle at all. But the thing is, it might take a few layers before you get that really bright sheen. I'd actually debated at this point whether or not I wanted to connect all of the stars with the constellations, but I found that it looked a little bit empty just having the um, the stars separated there. And I felt like adding the little lines of the constellations kind of gave your mind a little bit more of an indication of what you were trying to achieve with the artwork. I'm using the Sakura Jelly Roll now to kind of just draw some constellations within the circle. I think that if I had done it again, I probably would have made um, it get deeper and darker within the, um, within the center so that those constellations lines popped a little more but I am pretty happy with how the wash looks overall. I'm doing chubby little stars um, as the date bubbles again. People have asked me how I draw my stars and I basically just think of like a flower with only five pointy petals because I don't really um, do any guidelines. I kind of just kind of draw like a fat little star and color it in. So um, 
that's that's it worked well for me I find that if you do a layout like this you could also probably lay out the dates a little bit more ratedly but I have a kind of an idea of what's happening for me this week so I've just altered a little bit anticipating that I'll have a busier second half of a week so I've got um, I've got more space on that side of the paper uh, so that's just something to think about you don't really have to copy where I put my date bubbles you can kind of do that anywhere you like um, so that kind of rounds up the overall design for this actually I'm really happy with it because it looks nice and shiny on my page um, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in my Instagram um, ask me anything session this week um, I, I got a whole I've got like a lot a lot of questions so I've only managed to get through maybe a quarter of them but I do appreciate everyone taking the time out to um, chat to me about them so I hope you enjoyed that video I think we're on to a new theme next week and I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Bye!